In this video, we're going to be going over an incredibly fun, very fast paced, very high DPS PVE build in New World. This build is going to be utilizing the Rapier and the Void Gauntlet. A lot of people are using Rapier Ice Gauntlet or Rapier Spear, but I chose to go with the Void Gauntlet just because it is a lot of fun, at least in my opinion. I am very much liking this play style and having a blast with this build. We are going to be utilizing primarily the Bleed side of the tree for the Rapier, and then the Void Gauntlet is just going to be sheer back bar utility. This build pumps out a ton of DPS. Yes, it's a very fast play style and you're going to be rotating through abilities very quickly. So let's first start off by taking a look at the rapier mastery tree. The three active abilities that we're going to take is going to be Tondo, Flourish and Finish, and Flurry. You're only going to want to upgrade Tondo twice in order to leave room for an additional passive because we really don't think the initial hit damage from Tondo by 100% if you're at least four meters away from your target is very valuable to the build. So we're going to leave that one alone, but for Flourish and Finish and for Flurry, we are going to fully upgrade these. You're going to get a lot of bang for your buck upgrading both of these. You're going to gain Grit on Flourish and Finish. You're going to gain Stamina back, and then every tick of damage from Tondo's Bleed is going to reduce the cooldown of this ability by 3.5%, which is quite nice. And then of course, we have Finish for the burst damage at the end and then we're going to utilize flurry for just a massive amount of damage output and it's going to restore a ton of health as well whenever you take the required perks that we're going to talk about in this build you also want to upgrade this fully because you're then going to do 25 percent more block damage you're also going to reduce the cooldown of this ability by seven percent for each hit of flurry which makes it pretty incredible you can use this ability a whole lot we're also going to extend the rapier's bleed by one second for every hit of flurry and then of course the last hit of flurry is also going to apply a stack of bleed which is going to deal 10 percent weapon damage per second for 12 seconds then on the grace tree the only abilities we're going to take are some passive abilities we're going to take controlled breathing to restore some stamina we're going to take perfectionist that's going to deal 10 percent more damage when your health is full and then we're going to take red curtains this is going to reduce all cooldowns by five percent every time you critical strike and it has a max five reductions per attack the rest of the passives taken are going to reduce cooldowns and just increase your overall damage output next we're going to take a look at our void gauntlet so for the void gauntlet our active abilities are going to be petrifying scream we're going to take oblivion and then we're going to take essence rupture remember your void gone is going to be strictly for utility only you're going to switch over do a rotation and switch back over to your rapier to pump out a massive amount of damage really you're going to want to start your fights by laying down an oblivion the oblivion is going to deal a little bit of weapon damage per second and it's going to empower yourself and friendlies increasing your damage by 15 percent you're also going to apply a weaken to all the targets caught inside of the oblivion as well which is pretty nice utility to your team and then you're going to have invigorating oblivion here which also provides some more utility to your team in the form of of stamina regen then we're taking scream along with petrifying scream we're also going to take the ability putrefying scream or the perk on our armor and we'll talk about that more here in just a minute but that's one of the main reasons we're taking this ability also for the cc that this applies it is very useful in some situations we're going to spec all the way down into this to also get a little bit of tankiness added for the four to five for each enemy hit then the last ability that we're going to take is pretty subjective you could either take orb of decay or essence rupture orb of decay is just going to allow you to do a little bit more damage for this build but again we're using the void gauntlet primarily for utility so i prefer to use essence rupture orb of decay also has a heal but it scales exclusively with focus and we're not taking any focus in this build so it wouldn't be that great but you would be taking this primarily for the damage if you decided to take orb of decay and you would spec all the way down into this tree the other option that i like a little bit more is essence rupture you're going to fire a projectile dealing 100% weapon damage that inflicts essence rupture for 10 seconds. This is going to heal anyone that hits that target for 20% of the damage done. This does not scale off of focus. This scales off of the damage applied to that target. However, this does not work with dots, so bear that in mind. So it's not going to work with your bleed stacks, but it is going to work with the direct damage that's applied to the target. We're then going to fully upgrade this. You're also going to receive 15 stamina when hitting the afflicted target, and then you are going to receive a heal as well whenever essence rupture ends i feel like essence rupture just applies a certain amount of utility that's very easy to use and that's why i take it i like essence rupture over orb of decay but again if you are just going for sheer damage you can go orb of decay if you feel like you have plenty of healing if i'm running pugs i'm probably taking essence rupture for sure i think essence rupture just provides a lot of utility and there's a lot of bang for your buck within these three abilities whenever you fully upgrade that skill so i really like using that with this build that's my personal preference but you can take either one now let's talk about attributes for for just a moment i go with the 265 150 100 attribute split 265 dex 150 intelligence and 100 constitution now bear in mind this is 625 gear so that's where the extra 15 points of attribute comes in so if you're not 625 yet don't worry about that 
This is usually the split. Dex, Intelligence, Constitution, 265, 150, 100. And then, of course, you can push your Constitution down even lower and then pump your Intelligence up. I wouldn't go much higher than 265 Dex. That would be the maximum because you start to get diminishing returns. So anything above that, I would pump into Intelligence. So if I wanted to drop my Constitution down to 50, for example, I'd put the extra 50 in Intelligence. And then if I wanted to drop my Constitution down to five, if I'm playing a really crack group, going for speed runs, whatever the case may be, I would just pump that into Intelligence as well. And we'd probably go like a 265 dex 250 intelligence and five con split some people will go to 50 intelligence for this 30 percent duration to damage over time spells i like the sheer damage a little bit more so i go dexterity intelligence constitution the rapier scales primarily off of dex and secondarily off of intelligence so you're going to want to split stat this build in some way regardless but this is how i like to do it this is a starting point for me if you feel like your survivability is too low, then you can pump up to 150 con and you can drop your dexterity down. So it'd look a little bit like this. You would pump your dex to 215-ish and then you would pump your constitution up to 150. And this is how your build would look if you just need a little bit more survivability. So you can see our damage numbers didn't go down too much. You're still going to pump out a lot of damage. You're going to have a little bit of extra survivability. But those are the stat splits that I like to run. That's what I would recommend with this build. Now let's take a look at our equipment. So of course, we're going to be in the light armor build because we're DPSing. We want the maximum damage possible. And I think light armor is most definitely still the way to go if you're trying to pump out a lot of damage in the expeditions. Some people are going medium armor. I think that's just fine. You can work your way through M10s and medium armor. But if you're really trying to pump out maximum damage, you're going to want to be in that light armor category. You can definitely complete M10s and gold them in medium. Some people do it for the extra survivability. I still prefer light a whole lot, so that's what I use. So let's first talk about armor and the preferred perks that you would want to get on your armor. Bear in mind, this build is not 100% BIS. It is decent enough. It is still really good. It pumps out a lot of damage, but a lot of this gear I just already had whenever I was putting this build together. I didn't want to invest a ton of money into this build. So just bear that in mind as you go, and I'll make sure I tell you guys exactly what I would get if I was shooting for perfectly bis. So for my armor, I have the Sun Lord set. So this comes with Shirking Fortification, Ancient Ward, and Refreshing Evasion. Of course, you would want Ward on all of your PvE gear for running expeditions, and that's what all these pieces have on there. That's what all the Sun Lord's pieces have on there. And then I bought this medium chest. It just has Ancient Ward Invigorated. It was the cheapest Ancient Ward piece I could find on the marketplace at the time, and it works just fine for this build, but of course, that's that's obviously not this or exactly what I'd be shooting for. What you would really want to have is the ward type for the enemy that you're fighting. So you'd want to have five piece ward. That is a must. And then you would want your skill perk on there. And then the third perk you would want would be refreshing. So if all you can afford is two perk gear and you're trying to get into the expedition and run this build, you could run just ancient ward refreshing. That would be plenty enough. And then you'd be good to go. There are some of the weapon perks that I would highly recommend that you get on your gear because they are pretty incredible. We're going to go over those right now. So the skill perks that you're going to want to get is leeching fury. That one for sure is amazing. You definitely want to have that on your armor. I have it on my weapon right now. We'll go over that here in just a second too. I only have this on my weapon because I just had this weapon in my storage whenever I was putting this build together and it kind of worked out pretty perfectly. But whenever you have that on your weapon, you're also losing out on some damage. So I would much prefer to have that on my armor. However, it does not do as much life steal on your armor as it does on your weapon, but it still does plenty. So you'd want to get that on your armor. So Leeching Fury for sure, you would definitely want to have Putrefying Scream, and then I think Nullifying Oblivion as well. And then Keen Tondo and Refreshing Rupture would be optional perks to get on your gear too. And then on our weapons, let's go over these. It's Ancient Bane, Leeching Flurry, and Keenly Jagged. I also notice on this rapier, I have 21 Dex and 10 Con. Ideally, you would want to put just Dex or just Intelligence on your weapons or your gear. You don't really want to pump Con on PvE gear. That way you have a lot of flexibility whenever you want to either lower your con or raise your con or whatever the case may be. You can pump a lot more damage that way. So you really don't want to have con in your gear. This is just the rapier that I had in my in my inventory. So I just used it. I didn't want to spend a lot of money here. So I have Ancient Bane, Leeching Flurry, and Keenly Jagged. And this does a massive amount of damage, even with the third perk being Leeching Flurry. Leeching Flurry on your weapon does heal you for an insane amount. So if you want to get rid of a little bit of damage or you don't mind sacrificing a little bit of damage for more survivability, you could go this route get leeching flurry on your weapon it is it is pretty crazy actually you just heal up by crazy amounts anytime you attack a mob with leeching flurry you go from nothing to basically full right out of the gate so it's pretty nice to have but the same can be said if you have it on your weapon it is it is pretty nice there too but the ideal perks that you would want to be shooting for on this rapier in my opinion would be bane vicious and then keenly empowered that's what i would shoot for if i was shooting for a bis rapier for this particular build then the void gauntlet this is another one that i just kind of had laying around it's keen nullifying 
nullifying oblivion ancient bane again i would much rather have nullifying oblivion on my armor instead of my weapon and if you're shooting for absolute bis here which the void gauntlet in my opinion doesn't matter a whole lot because again you're just using this for utility you're going to be laying down your rotation you're going to be pulling off of it going to the rapier you really rarely are going to be using your void gauntlet for damage but nonetheless if i was shooting for a bis void gauntlet for this build i'd be going for bane vicious and then either keen or putrefying scream on the void gauntlet itself now let's talk about jewelry for just a little bit the amulet that you're going to want to have is pretty much this amulet i have on right here minus the constitution you're going to want to have an elemental protection on there, health, and then refreshing. That is BIS, or I would consider that to be BIS for this build. You just wouldn't want to have constitution, in my opinion. If you do, it's okay. Again, you can definitely get by by running higher con. That's only if you're really trying to pump out a massive amount of damage or want the flexibility to reduce your constitution down to like the five or the 50 mark. Then you want to kind of get rid of the constitution on your gear. Nonetheless, this would be considered a bis amulet for me for flame protection. You would want one for each type of elemental damage that you're going against in mutations, or even if you're just running regular dungeons, uh, there are some elemental uh, effects in some of those two that you might want to consider running an elemental amulet for. But for mutations specifically, you want to go with the elemental type or the elemental protection for your amulet. Now let's move on to the ring. If I were shooting for absolute bis, I think I would be shooting for thrust damage, elite and probably keen awareness in place of bloodletting but nonetheless bloodletting is pretty good for this build because this is a high bleed build so leeching thrust damage bloodletting is absolutely incredible i probably wouldn't spend the money on another ring for this build just go farm out the heart of aviva this is a free ring that you can get from doing chest runs within brimstone sand so just go on a world tour get in those chest runs and you'll have a chance to get this ring it is an incredible ring for this build and one that i would highly recommend there is really no reason to go farm one out this is plenty good enough and is absolutely incredible works great for this build and then for our earring we'd really be shooting for refreshing refreshing toast and then purifying toast for this build that would be considered bis in my opinion or you could replace refreshing with beloved if you wanted to go that route and try to reduce your aggro by a little bit but this one works fine too refreshing refreshing toast nimble i had this just laying around the wandering expedience this is also a free piece of jewelry that you can go farm this comes out of the imperium forge you can get this on the normal version of the imperium forge as well and it's a pretty good ear ring for this particular build so i'd highly recommend getting this one as well it is not really bis you really want to have purifying toast too but nonetheless it's good enough to get you through if you just want to get a free earring and you're not shooting for absolute bis i also just noticed that i have a flame protection amulet on with a void protection build so don't pay attention to that obviously if it's void and i have void gem slotted I think I just had this in my gear set still, and I just haven't changed it out. So you would want to have a void protection amulet here. So it'd be void protection, refreshing health. That's what you'd be looking for. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to point that out because everything else is void, and then that's obviously wrong. So don't pay attention to any of my gems in any of my gear right now. They're probably scuffed uh, just because this is what I had in my gear set. And I haven't changed them to be mutation specific. Just thought I'd point that out to you guys. So now speaking of gems, let's take a look at the gems that you would want in your gear. One of the things that I do like to do, and I have an entire video over this if you're interested, I usually like to slot all opals in my gear, in my armor, and then I just go with an amulet for that elemental type. So for example, flame protection. So if I were to build out this build, I would do all opals, flame protection amulet with a ruby slotted in here just to get the fire absorption. But in this case, I was messing around with different builds and different constitution types. So I slotted all void absorption here. If you're gonna go 100 con or 150 con, you can 100% get away with slotting in nothing but opals here. And then go just your elemental protection. It'll save you a lot of time, save you a lot of effort, save you a lot of money. Then you want to switch gyms again. I can make sure to link that full video down in the description below that explains how that works if you want more information there. But you can do that. Before your armor, you can either go this way. You can slot all of these if you need a little bit more protection. All of the elemental gyms if you need a little bit more protection. Or you can go the opal route with just an elemental amulet with the specific gem type in there. And then for your weapons, you really don't want an opal in your rapier. Really what you would want to use in your rapier is an elemental gem specific to that type of mob or a diamond if you have a group that's going to keep you topped off at full health all the time a diamond works great or an elemental gym and then for your void gauntlet i would just suggest an elemental gym for whatever mob type you're fighting i think a lot of people like to slot tier twos i can't stand the new world does that with the tier two with the math that works out so i just buy a pristine i throw in there and again your void gauntlet is strictly for utility anyway so it really does not matter a whole lot what you put in there
Now, what about the heart rune? Let's talk about this just a little bit. Whatever heart rune you slot in here is really going to be dependent upon your group comp and whatever expedition you are running. For example, if you're running Empyrean Forge, the Bile Bomb rune would be great because there are a lot of clerics within that expedition. And so using Bile Bomb or something with disease, you also have Putrefying Scream. So you may not want to run Bile Bomb and stack that on top. Putrefying Scream is probably enough, but you could run Bile Bomb, just giving you an example here for what you could do. And then if you're running something like Ennead and you're trying to bypass the last phase of that boss fight where there's those pillar mechanics going on you can disease the boss so this is a very good heart rune to run for that last boss fight too and then if you're just wanting to go sheer damage you could run something like the brutal heart rune of detonate this is just going to give you plus 20 percent explosion damage you're going to gain rinse so you're going to take a little bit more damage but you're also just going to do a ton of explosion damage for a big burst damage with that rune so it really just depends. You could also run vines if needed. So you get the picture. It really just depends. If all else fails, just run Brutal Heart Rune of Detonate and you'll be just fine. You're going to be do doing a lot of damage. It's going to be your job to be pumping out damage anyway. So if you're not sure what your group comp is or if you're running a pug, you can always just throw on Brutal Heart Rune of Detonate and everything will be okay. Now let's talk about the rotation and how you're going to utilize this build to pump out a ton of damage. Really, whenever you first start using this build or whenever you're going to engage the beginning of every fight, you're going to want to have your Void Gauntlet ready. You're going to want to throw down an Oblivion in order to gain the Empower and weaken the mobs. And then you're going to shoot out an Essence Rupture at one of the mobs so that you can gain the benefits of the healing while you're in the fight. Then you utilize Scream if you are fighting a mob that needs to be diseased. If you're like in a Nature Mutation or in one of the other mutations we talked about a second ago that requires disease or needs disease then you can use your putrefying scream if you have that perk on your gear you can also use petrifying stream just for the root or for the cc if you need to to root some mobs in place while you dps them down it can definitely be used for that and should be used for that as well so you're going to start the fight off there it's going to be oblivion into essence rupture and then you're going to save your scream use that only when necessary and then you're going to immediately switch over to your rapier so whenever you switch over to your rapier you're going to do a quick tondo and then you're going to do a quick flurry right after these come off of cooldown incredibly quick your tondo has a very fast cooldown and then your flurry has a built-in cdr with the fleeting strikes passive so whenever you utilize that it is going to be a very quick combo. You are essentially going to be tondoing into flurry over and over and over. And then you are going to stack up stacks. And then whenever you need some massive burst damage, you're going to use flourish and finish. So three stacks on a mob. And then whenever you see a mob get fairly low, you can flourish and finish once you get those three stacks for some massive amount of burst damage. But just make sure you always have your empower down below your feet with the oblivion. If somebody else in your team is running oblivion as well, just make sure you're not stacking them on top of each other and wasting them. Just be cognizant of that and, and pay attention to what's going on. And then make sure you're using your essence rupture at every turn. Make Make sure whenever those are off cooldown you switch to your void gauntlet you use them and then immediately switch back to the rapier and then go through your rotations there and you're going to be doing a massive amount of damage this is a very fast play style the cooldowns come up very quickly you're going to be hitting a lot of buttons and to me it is super fun i love this build it is maybe one of my favorite probably is one of my favorite dps builds that i've ran so far just having a lot of fun with this particular build but that's going to do it for this and boys and girls thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it. i hope you enjoyed this build try it out let me know how you like it let me know what you think i personally really love it it is super fun i've been having an absolute blast running m10s with this build pumps out a lot of damage provides a lot of utility in the same build super fun but that'll do it Thank you guys again for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video or if you just like new world content in general, please make sure to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that as well. And of course, we stream every Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock a.m. CST over on twitch.tv slash BDLG. Love to see you come hang out over there. We have a great time. That'll do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.